This is Spotlight, Central Florida Public Media's arts, culture, and entertainment segment. I'm Nicole Darden Creston. The Spotlight is on now. Special Olympics Florida is holding its Fall Classic event this weekend at the ESPN Wide World of Sports Complex at Walt Disney World Resort. About a thousand athletes from across the state will come together to compete after winning in local and regional events. Megan McLean is the chief operating officer of Special Olympics Florida. She says the organization is more than sports events. It's a culture of inclusion that values the dignity, development, enrichment and success of each of its athletes, many of whom are people with intellectual disabilities. There are 75,000 athletes on Special Olympic Florida's roster from ages 2 to 99. Special Olympics Florida is an organization that provides year-round sports training and competition to people with intellectual disabilities across the state of Florida. And we're actually serving over 75,000 athletes across the state currently. And that number is continuing to grow fairly rapidly. We also do a lot of healthcare for people with intellectual disabilities. So our athletes have the opportunity to have access to health screenings in eight different health disciplines. Uh, We also have our athlete leadership training, where in addition to competing in one of our 27 sports that we offer year round, athletes have the ability to enter uh, leadership courses where they learn about public speaking, about advocacy, how to be a coach in a sport. So a lot of our athletes may sort of graduate from competitively participating in the sport to wanting to be a coach and take on that leadership role. One of the things that I think is really cool about Special Olympics Florida is that we have athletes in our program starting at age two, and we have no maximum age limit. So we have athletes competing today who are in their 90s. So we really like to be a place that people with intellectual disabilities can call home for a lifetime. Can you walk me through what is happening this weekend, the Special Olympics Florida Fall Classic? Yeah, absolutely. It takes place uh, at ESPN Wide World of Sports on the Walt Disney World property. And this is the second largest sports championship that we do annually. And it will feature over 1,000 athletes and unified partners participating in six different sports. And what a unified partner is, is a person who does not have an intellectual disability. And we actually have a setup where they compete on teams with people who do have intellectual disabilities. And we call these unified teams. And the goal of that is really to foster friendships and relationships and some of the social skills that come from those unified teams in six different sports. So gymnastics, powerlifting, pickleball, flag football, and softball. All of that will be happening at Wide World of Sports this weekend. And just so I have my math right, that's two different kinds of gymnastics, right? Yes. Yeah. So we offer both artistic gymnastics and rhythmic gymnastics. So artistic is when you see the beam and the parallel bars and the uneven bars, that's artistic gymnastics. And then we have athletes that participate in rhythmic gymnastics, which is routines with the hoop, the ball, the ribbon, and a floor routine. Tell me about the fall classic history. Is the specific event new or has that been going on for a while? How does that fit into the annual schedule of Special Olympics Florida sports? The Fall Classic has been been around for a really long time, and it's really the culmination of a season uh, for these athletes. So the athletes begin by training locally with, at the county level. They're training with their teammates for about eight to 10 weeks, and then they participate in area games. So that's a group of counties that participate and compete against each other. And then all of the athletes that participate at area games advance to the regional games. And then depending on their performance there, they have the ability to become eligible to advance to the state championship. So this really is the top level of competition that we host annually in the state of Florida for these six sports. So it's a really exciting opportunity for these athletes to showcase sometimes years of practice to get there, but at the very least, a a season of really hard work that they've put in. And they really come and just want to compete just like any athlete wants to compete, showcase their skills and have the opportunity to stand on the podium like any athlete dreams of. Of course. Do you have any specific stories that have been standing out to you throughout this process about some of the personal Special Olympics Florida athletes? Yeah, I think that we have some incredible athletes in our program. All of them are truly incredible. But I think that one of the stories is of an athlete that works here with us. She's participated with the program in every capacity. So she was an athlete. She's been a coach. She actually became a certified volleyball official with USA Volleyball. And she'll be there this weekend participating in pickleball. So her story is really cool because she spent her life using Special Olympics to open doors for her and really has been able to have a very joyful and fulfilled independent life because of the skills that she's gained through Special Olympics Florida. And it sounds like she has been giving back along the way. 
Yes, Marianne is a, a very impressive person and is always offering her skills and her input to help make us better. It always keeps the athletes at the center of every decision we make and everything that we do because she's right here alongside us. If you could set the curriculum, set the expectations, if you could wave a magic wand, what would you want people to take away from the experience this weekend? What will happen this weekend is so inspiring that I would invite everyone to come and attend. Parking is free. There's no cost for admission. Uh, we start on Friday afternoon with all of our sport competitions. And then Friday evening, we have a really impressive opening ceremonies that begins at 745. Again, no cost to attend that. And that's just a celebration. It's all thousand athletes coming together to be celebrated and to celebrate each other with a really fun ceremony, which is then followed by a dance, which I think is most of our athletes' favorite part of the competition is they have a massive dance party with their fellow athletes. And then competition picks up again Saturday morning. And I think that if people have the opportunity to experience the competition this weekend, there's really two things that I would like them to take away. And, and first, it's that these athletes are not different than any other athlete. They have trained their hardest to make it to this point. They've had some successes, some failures. So really understanding that a Special Olympics athlete is like any other athlete. And the other is just the joy that's generated, the sportsmanship that you'll see right alongside that competitiveness is an incredible level of sportsmanship that you don't see at every sporting event. Historically, people with intellectual disabilities are often underserved when it comes to healthcare. And Special Olympics International recognized this gap many years ago and instituted the Healthy Athletes Program. And that will also be happening at Wide World of Sports this weekend. So uh, we'll take over the State Farm Field House at ESPN's Wide World of Sports, and we turn it into basically a medical clinic where athletes can see doctors in seven different disciplines. So they can see an eye doctor, and if they need glasses, they can have glasses made for them at no cost to the athlete. They can see an audiologist and understand if there's any hearing loss. And if there is, we can provide a voucher to get that athlete hearing aids. They'll see a podiatrist. So literally in between flag football games, an athlete could see seven different doctors or nurse practitioners and have their healthcare screenings done. Um, and we do this at almost all of our competitions. We're really proud of that. That's a really uh, a lot of gap for a lot of our athletes. And it's for many reasons, but a healthier athlete is a better athlete. Special Olympics as a global organization has become the largest healthcare provider for people with intellectual disabilities, uh, which is really interesting because Special Olympics was not created as a nonprofit 501c3 to meet that need, but saw the need and, and has continued to meet it over and over again to serve the athletes the way they needed to be served. Through those screenings, we have discovered some health-threatening issues that we've been able to get treated immediately for these athletes. But one of the stories that is less of an urgent medical need, but definitely a need, is there was an athlete who was a track and field athlete and was competing and was continuously coming in second place and eventually went and saw an eye doctor and they recognized that this athlete needed some corrective lenses. So through Special Olympics Florida, was able to get glasses and also sport goggles. And as soon as the athlete had the sport goggles, he started coming in first place. And when they asked him why, they learned that he couldn't see that well. So he was always following the person in front of him. So he was following the person in first place to know where to go. And as soon as he saw that doctor and had his needs met, he was able to see on his own and come in first place. So the broad impact that we have through both our sports programs and our health programs, we try to make sure that athlete has the skills that they need to live the life that they want to live with the level of independence that they want to have. That was Special Olympics Florida Chief Operating Officer Megan McLean. I'm Nicole Darden-Creston. Thanks for listening to Spotlight.